Uh, let me summarize this whole uh, random variable and its distribution for you uh, in one slide. So anytime you have a random variable, you have to worry about its range and worry about its PMF, okay? So usually you will have a random variable x. We are thinking of a discrete random variable, so that's why we have PMF and all that. We have a random variable x with its range being a discrete finite set, okay? This is a very typical example. Usually the range is finite. If it's not finite, you'll put dot, 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 keep going, okay? So this is ending at tk. You may not end at tk. You keep, we may keep going on and on and on again, okay? So then you have a PMF. So you can always think of a discrete random variable in terms of a table like this, okay? The first row is the value that the random variable takes. Second row is the probability with which that random variable takes that value, okay? That's a PMF, okay? Values, PMF range PMF, that's it. So that fully captures what the random variable is. So there are two crucial properties of the PMF, okay? The value taken by the PMF is a probability. So it should be between 0 and 1, okay? And the total probabilities, sum of all the values in the PMF should be 1. Why is that? Because random variable x takes values only in that range, right? So if you take sum of all probabilities of that random variable takes first value, second value, third value, so on, it should take some value. So that will exhaust all the outcomes in your experiment and that will give you a probability of 1, okay? So these two properties are defining properties for a PMF, okay? So now what will happen? One very typical problem that you will see is somebody will give you a range and somebody will give you a PMF, a function from the range to 0, 1 or some anything else and ask you when is it a valid PMF, okay? For that, you check these two conditions, okay? You check whether every value taken by the PMF is between 0 and 1 and whether the value adds up to 1, okay? So that's it. So you do that, you have the PMF, okay? So this point I'm making at the end is uh, very important. So you have to build up the skill of dealing with random variables, PMFs, distributions, moving them around without worrying about sample space experiment and all that, okay? So that skill is also very important. I talked about two skills here. From the sample space and experiment, if somebody defines a random variable, you want to get a sense of how to find its distribution using the definitions of the probability space, that's one skill important. The other skill is from PMF onwards, okay? Once you know the PMF, how do you keep manipulating it and working with it? That's also an equally important skill. And both of these you have to develop uh, to be good at probability and statistics, okay? Okay, so let me give you a couple of examples of what is this uh, uh, working with the PMF. So here's a table here and there's a PMF Okay, so here is a skill of working with a PMF. So here's a, PM, a PMF of a random variable, which is partially specified, okay? So I'm telling you that the range is minus 1, 1, 2, 4, and then the PMF takes values 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, and the next one is blank, okay? And then you have to find fx of 4, okay? So what is the property I'll use? It's, it's quite easy to see what the property is going to be. Uh, so everything is between 0 and 1, and they have to add up to 1, right? So if it has to add up to 1, you know that, you know, 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.125 plus fx of 4 equals 1. And you do this, you get fx of 4 equals 0 0.125. So that's 0 0.125. So that's the first skill. I mean, it's quick to fill up, okay? Now find the range of x. Why is the range given? For, for instance, 4 may work out to 0, okay? So if the probability is 0, usually you don't put it in the range. Maybe the range is uh, 1. But in this case, every value is possible, uh, minus 1, 1, 2, 4. So that's the range. Uh, probability that P of X, probability of X greater than uh, 3 is basically Fx of 4, right? If X is greater than 3, 4 is the only possibility, and that's 0.125. Uh, probability that X is less than 3 by 2, it's 1.5, right? So it's Fx of minus 1 plus Fx of 1, isn't it? less than 1.5, that is 0.75, okay? So notice how easy it is to work with PMFs, right? So it's very, very easy to work with PMFs, uh, very simple uh, uh, quantities and very basic algebra you can do. So this is the uh, first example I am doing of working with PMF. There's one more example where things become slightly more complicated, okay? So these kind of cases uh, will appear uh, also over and over again. One needs to be comfortable with this, okay? So here's a PMF given. Uh, but notice this range here, it's, uh, it's not finite, okay? Okay, so this is what is called a countable case. Uh, so it keeps on going 1, 2, 3, 4, you can just count it out, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, on and on. 
and uh, the PMF is given as C by 3 power k. So, it is C by 3 power k. So, first thing is what is this C? It is once again you know it is a partially specified PMF. Okay? Now, what do I use to uh, find out the value of C? I know that C by uh, 3 plus C by 3 squared plus C by 3 power 3 plus so on has to be equal to 1. Why is that? This is a condition on the PMF, right? So, you use this to find C. Okay? So, th here is an infinite summation 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 square, etc. And uh, from the formula, you know, it is 1 by 3 by 1 minus 1 by 3, this has to be equal to 1. So, it is 1 by 3 by 2 by 3 is 1 half, so C equals 2. Okay? So, whenever you have a partially specified PMF like this, the first task is to go ahead and get its full specification using its properties. You know, it has to be between 0 and 1 and uh, you, when you add it up, you have to get 1. So, you do that, you get this. Okay? You may have to use some skills in adding up, right? The adding of a geometric progression is up to infinity is, you know, there is a formula for it, etc. So, this is the formula for that and you use it, right? So, you remember this formula, right? So, it is basically a plus a squared plus a cube plus so on equals a by 1 minus a if uh, a is less than 1, right? So, well, between 0 and 1, let us just keep it like that, okay? So, this is the formula for uh, that I am using here. There are more general uh, geometric uh, series formulae available. So, now, there is this question of probability that x is greater than 10. Okay? So, if x is greater than 10, uh, k equals 11, 12, 13, etc. So, you have c by 3 power 11 plus c by 3 power 12 plus so on. What will this add up to? Again, you use the same formula, but maybe you need a different formula here. So, a plus a r plus a r squared plus so on will be a by 1 minus r, where r is less than 1, okay? 0 less than r less than 1. Okay? This is the other formula. So, if you here you have, uh, uh, well, c is 2 now, right? I know c is 2, so 2 by 3, 2 by 3. So, this is probability that x is greater than 10, okay? So, this is uh, x equals 11, this is x equals 12, etc., right? So, I am adding up all those probabilities. So, now this value of a is 2 by uh, 3 power 11 and uh, r is, uh, so in this formula, a equals 2 by 3 power 11 and r equals 1 by 3, isn't it? This is the same formula here. So, 1 minus 1 by 3. So, if you go ahead and do this, this 2 will cancel, 3 will cancel, you have 1 by 3 power 10. Okay? So, that is probability that x is greater than 10. So, now what about this guy? So, what is this conditional probability? How do you do conditioning x greater than 10 given x greater than 5? This is probability. So, you use the uh, probability of A given B is probability of A intersect B by probability of B, isn't it? So, what is probability of A intersect B? X is greater than 10 intersected with X is greater than 5. That is nothing but X is greater than 10. Okay? So, this one we already know. What about this one? Use the same thing. 2 by 3 power 6 plus 2 by 3 power 7, so on. Right? So, you will see this is also 1 by 3 power 5. So, you will see 1 by 3 power 10 by 1 by 3 power 5. Okay? Check this, check this calculation. So, you will get here uh, 3 power 5, 1 by 3 power 5. So, that is the answer. Okay? So, you can see how once you have the PMF, any event, even conditioning and all that, right? So, if you define any event involving uh, that random variable x and uh, its ranges and limiting its range, etc., there you go, you have a uh, very easy calculation possible, but uh, you know, use quite often the PMF may be partially specified, you may have to use some properties to get its full specification. Okay? So, I think that is the end of uh, this uh, lecture. In the next lecture, we will start looking at something called uh, some of the common distributions that you usually come across in statistical applications. We will stop here for this lecture. Thank you.